Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're gonna to be doing this super easy, high-low Halloween tumbler. Now I've done a few of these high-low looks over the years and I thought, why not add a Halloween one to the mix? As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today into the description box below so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers and slay all day. Let's do this. Now I've already prepped and primed a 20 ounce skinny. I just painted it this really pretty, I think it's got gumdrop and that was by Krylon. It doesn't matter. It's just a pretty light pastel color is all you need. This is just a pretty lavender. Now I already have about 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy mixed up here. Uh, you want to make sure you have a nice thick coating because we're just going to add our glitter right into our epoxy so that way we get a nice smooth finish right away. It's, it's a lot quicker this way. Now I didn't want to fully glitter up this tumbler so I'm just going to be using these really pretty dots that I offer at socglitters.com if you would like to purchase these or you just use any type of shapes you might already have on hand that you would like to use. So I just put a little bit of those dots right into my mixture and I'm going to stir that up really good. Because I'm going for more of a pastel look, I just really thought all these little fun dots just went really well with the look that I wanted to do. So now all that's left to do is go ahead and apply that epoxy with our dots mixed in. And after I got it all put onto my tumbler, I'm just going to come through and make sure that those dots are all kind of separated, making sure that they're not all uh, stacked on top of each other. That just makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that onto my turner. I'm going to let that cure really well, and we'll be ready to move on to that next step. All right, it is nice and cured. And before I move any further, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my rim. I'm gonna give it a good sanding and then I'm gonna wipe down any particles that might've gotten on there so that way I have a nice smooth surface. Now, typically when I've done my high-low look over the years, I don't really like make a template or anything. I just kind of go at it and, and make it. But this time I decided to go ahead and make a template. So maybe it'd be a little bit easier for my new friends out there that are just starting and, and kind of need a template to go by to uh, do stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this quick template here. So all I'm doing is taking my measuring tape. One side is gonna be up higher and the other side is gonna be down lower towards the bottom of the tumbler. So it doesn't matter which, where you put it, you know, it can be end and, and start wherever you would like. So just as long as it's completely on the opposite side of what you're doing so that we have a nice split to it, so that way it has a nice diagonal look to it is all you need. So I just use my soft measuring tape for that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and block off kind of the area where I want to apply my vinyls. This is going to give us an idea of where we want the, the vinyls to end, obviously, and give us an idea of where that paint is gonna start after we're done applying the vinyls. So I chose these really cool looking bats. I'll put down in the description box where I got the little bats and stuff and the vinyl as well. It's really pretty kind of hot pink vinyl. I thought, again, just went really well with the, the look that I'm going for. So I, got, I cut those out on just a basic vinyl and now I'm just gonna load up that bottom that we blocked off and, and these bats. So this can be done in so many different ways. I will make sure that I tag the, the other videos that I've done in this high-low look, but I just really wanted to do something Halloween related and I just thought this was so cute. But I am gonna make sure that I take those bats and also come around to the bottom as well. I like to finish up my bottoms and my tumblers just so it all looks all fluid and cohesive with one another. Now, once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and peel that tape back and we are gonna get ready for the next step. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and put another coat of epoxy over top of our vinyls because we are gonna be painting after this process and I don't want to get the paint on the vinyls. So we need a nice smooth surface to be able to paint onto. So I'm just gonna apply about 10 mLs of epoxy over top of our bats. I'm gonna let that cure and then we'll come back and get this finished up. It's nice and cured and it's ready to have that next step applied. And it's really cute like this too. I almost left it like this to be honest. And, you know, either way, whatever y'all want to do, <laughs> it's completely up to you because there is no right or wrong when it comes to making art. All right, so we're going to go based off of that top bat there that we did. So right at the very, the highest peak of that high-low look that we're doing, and we're going to take our lid and we're going to use that to our advantage. And I'd place it so that way it lines up really well so that way I know again where my center is where that split is so that way I know that my diag my diagonal paint line will be as straight as possible 
So I'm going to take a little piece of painter's tape and we're going to do just like how we did the first round with the vinyl, but this time I want it to overlap over top of the vinyls because I want that paint to come down over it just a little bit so that way once we kind of give it that rough look uh, I like to do after I paint, we have enough room to kind of do that. Again, I'm just going to try to take another piece of painter's tape, about the same size, and just flip it and go right off that seam at, on the lid because that's our center there and bring it down just a so that way the bats are just showing a little bit over the top of our piece of tape. So just like we did the first round is pretty much what we're doing here. So then I just like to hold it and make sure that it's all lined up. It looks good to me. So now I'm going to keep going with my tape here. So when I go to line up the two pieces together, I'm just gonna go based off the top corner of each piece of tape, so right there and right there, and I'm just gonna take my tape and run that across until it gets to the other side at that top corner. Now again, this doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we're gonna come back through, and like I said, we're gonna give it a little bit of a distressed look after we paint. So this is just more of like kind of help us out so that way we don't have to remove too much paint and we kind of know what you know where we want our paint to start and end. So after I get my template all done up, I'm just gonna come back through and finish masking off the rest of that bottom because I don't want any paint on that bottom. And then we're gonna take it outside and give it a good spray paint. So for the paint that I'm using, this is called Sweet Pea. Again, it was just a really pretty light pink color, whatever color you guys wanna use, or, or if you wanna use your acrylic paints, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and shake that up really good and seeing how it came out clear at first. That's why we wanna shake it up really good and give it a couple spritzes before we, we move on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice light coating of this color. And if it needs a second coat, go ahead and do that as well, because sometimes these lighter colors might show uh, the glitter underneath. So we want it nice and saturated with this coloring. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then we're ready to move on to the next step. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that template that we applied exposing our nice fresh paint line there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to fix up that line a little bit. So we're going to take some rubbing alcohol. I have rubbing alcohol in my spray bottle here and I also have a paper towel as you can see and I'm just going to spritz some of that rubbing alcohol right onto my paper towel and then we're just going to come through and distress around those edges there. Now all we're doing is just cleaning up. You can make it come up as high as you would like. You can make it go down as low as you would like, like I said earlier, but you don't want those edges to be perfect. See, just like that. You just want it very, very distressed, very jaggedy. That's the whole look of this and that's what we're going for. Just think of it as like, it, it almost looks like the paint got ripped, you know? I. I on some of my other ones before, I did have people ask, could we just uh, apply a template that looks like it already looks like that? I mean, I guess if, if you wanted to, you could absolutely do that. But I really like the way it just looks whenever I come through and do it by hand myself. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. As long as your one side stays up high and your one side stays down low, just like in clothing, you have high-low skirts. Just think of it like that. That's all we're doing here. But this is so easy, and I know you guys got this. All right, it is all done, and we're ready to apply another coating of epoxy over top, and then we're going to apply a decal. And of course, I'm going to make sure that I spray it down with my 2 times Ultra just to make sure that epoxy doesn't wick off my paints or my vinyls. So I'm going to go ahead and apply about 10 milliliters of epoxy over top of this, and then we're ready to apply that last decal. And like always, before after it's cured and before I apply my decal, I'm going to go ahead and trim up my rim. I'm going to give it a good sanding if it needs it, and I'm going to wipe it down really good. So for my decal today, I wanted to use something a little bit different, and I found this holographic vinyl sticker sheets off Amazon. I'll make sure to put that into the description box for you guys, but it is a sticker sheet it, or printable vinyl that's pretty much all it is but it has this really pretty holographic look to it and I thought it was really neat and I wanted to give it a try so that's that's what I'm using today so I found this monogram off of Creative Fabrica so anything on the left will have like that orange bats anything that center will have the uh, purple with the pumpkins and anything onto the right any letters onto the right will have that green with the cauldrons and ghosts 
but it's super easy to just go ahead and line it up, get it all straight and the way you would like it. And now we're gonna come through and make this an actual sticker. So the first thing I like to do, because you, you don't have to do this, but I like to add a little bit of, of an offset to mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an offset and I'm gonna make it as tight as I can to it. And I'm actually gonna change that coloring to white so that way nothing prints out when, once I go to get it cut but you can actually make it go ahead and make it just a full circle but these are going to be individual once i go to cut it and place it now to make sure it cuts out on that offset line rather than the image line i'm going to go ahead and highlight everything and go down to the lower right hand there and press flatten and that's going to stick everything together and make sure that there's only one cut right on the outside of that offset that i applied so let me just briefly go over one more time. I applied my offset pretty close to this, so each letter is gonna be individually cut. If you didn't want each letter individually cut, go ahead and make sure that offset stays all connected, kind of making a circle for yourself. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. And then now I'm ready to move on to my next step after I get this printed out and then cut off on my machine. And I forgot to mention, I, all I used was just my sticker setting, and it'll make these nice stickers for you. So I know I have a lot of space left around my paper. I'll kind of go over that here in a second. But all that's left to do is pick which side of your tumbler you want it on. I like to do my decals so that way it's kind of in the center of that split that we did. So that way that high-low look can be in full effect there. So with this, you don't want to use transfer tape or you don't want to use any kind of tape on any, any type of sticky adhesive because you run the chance of peeling the ink off of the vinyl. So this is why I said if you don't want to place it one by one like I have to do here, just go ahead and make that full circle for yourself. I'm going to show you right now how I kind of line everything up. So for this monogram, I'm just making sure that center line is just lined up with everything else and making sure that my gap is about as equal as everything else. And there we go. Super duper easy. So for the rest of my sticker paper there, I can still use the one side and the whole bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that right back in with the other paper. And all I have to do when I go to print and cut another image is just make sure that the image is on the proper side so that way I don't accidentally overlap where I did my last one. And of course, before I apply my last coatings of epoxy here, I'm gonna go ahead and give this decal a quick little spritz of my two times ultra. This is just to make sure that those inks are gonna stay in place on my vinyls and that my epoxy has something to stick to, especially with it being kind of a shinier vinyl. I'm gonna let that cure and it is ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.